Hello and welcome to another one of our pipeline safety videos produced by Speaker Pag but freely available to all to help share industry knowledge and make sure that the teams go home at the end of each shift safe and sound. Today we're complementing our pipe drop video which demonstrated how pipes behave when dropped from a height, either during loading and unloading or track along the right of way. We thought we'd have a closer look at the vacuum lift unit itself and walk through what's involved in a pre-start inspection. And who better to take some learnings from than Australia's VacLift expert, APGA Director, VacuWorks General Manager of Australasia, Lou Guevara. Thanks for joining us, Lou, and thanks for letting us uh, set up and do some filming in your workshop. It's great. I thought today we'd start off by having a look at your shoes firstly, and in particular the seal, to try and understand what is a bad seal and what is a good seal. So did you want yep, to talk sure. a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the seal performance and, and how it's actually installed and, and maintained is really important to uh, safety. And uh, generally we find that any pipe drop incidents tend to be related back to the condition of the seal. Okay. Um, you know, either whether, whether it was fitted correctly yep. um, or whether it's been damaged in, in the process. So let's have a look at uh, yeah. a, a good seal and a bad seal. Absolutely. So we've got and some examples here. So what are some of the things that we're looking for when we're doing a pre-start inspection on the foam itself? Okay, so this is a, a, an ex-rental that's just uh, come back from the field. It's been sitting out in the sun for a while. Yep. So we can see here that part of the seal is actually uh, pulled out from the channel. Yep. Uh, and you can also see that there's a lot of cracking, uh, a bit of deformation here where it's been sort of stored incorrectly. Um, this one's obviously been stored on a pallet or something similar to that. So you can see that a, a, seal, a, a seal like this is really going to struggle to get a good vacuum. It's really important when we install the seal that we use the correct tool mm -hmm. that allows us to push the seal in. And then we also want to make sure that we have a nice even, even uh, you know, level. Sure. You can see on this one here, this is another rental that's just come back. Um, and you can see that this seal is much more uniform in terms of how it's been inserted. And I'll okay. talk a bit about yeah. how, that, how that is done. So we've got, we've got a piece of foam here that has commonly been used uh, previously. And so what are some of the characteristics of this bit of foam here? Okay, so this is, um, this is the type of seal that um, VacuWorks and, and most of the industry has been using for probably the last 20 years. It's a two-piece seal. So it has um, two layers that are actually um, glued together in the factory. Yeah. And so because of that, it's really important that it's actually inserted into the channel in the correct way. It needs to face that way so that this seam is actually onto, uh, onto the surface of the pipe. Um, it's what we call an open cell rubber. So unfortunately, it works a bit like a sponge. It'll okay. absorb absorb water and oils and, and hydraulic oil and diesel and all those sorts of things. So yep. um, that can be pretty detrimental to, to the foam. Um, and as I say, it's really important that when you get it in uh, to the channel that it's, it's pretty uniform. Yeah. So, and as, uh, so we were talking before off camera, VacuWorks has been uh, developing a new product to bring to the market to sort of help uh, people inspect the foam when yep. it's installed but also uh, has better durability. So what are yes. some of the characteristics of this one here? Okay, so this is our, our new seal. It was developed in the US by our engineers and uh, is being produced in the US at the moment. Um, it's what we call a closed cell rubber. Okay. So it doesn't absorb moisture. It doesn't absorb water or oils or anything like that. It's, um, it's a much uh, more durable seal. Sure. And uh, you know, we've, we've had uh, a seal operating in Western Australia the last 12 months and it's done over 10,000 lifts. Wow, which okay. is um, quite, quite a, a great result um, with no no loss of vacuum. Yeah. Um, but then again, we've got a pretty good operator running that yeah. machine. So it, it <laughs> no really doubt. does depend a lot on the operator and, and how much damage they can inflict on the seal. So. Right. So Lou, I noticed that this seal here has these two grooves running down the side. What are they for? What's the benefit of that? Okay, so the two grooves allow us to um, more easily insert the seal into the channel and, and confirm that it is actually uh, correctly inserted. Um, it also provides really good holding force. So whereas this seal here is quite easy to, to pull out, 
Wow, okay. Yep. yep. This one here, it takes quite a bit more effort. So these, these ribs sort of lock it into place. Yeah, so those ribs will lock it into place, and so therefore it takes a, quite a bit more effort. And you can see here that yeah. even with that, it tends to sort of then just push back in and it still retains that, uh, that good seal integrity. Yeah, excellent. So that's what we're looking for when we're looking at the seal on the shoes. Over here, we've got a backlift unit. What are we um, What are we looking at here in terms of free starts? Okay, so these machines are very much uh, like most mechanical bits of equipment. Um, we've, we've got our power plant plant here, which is a diesel engine in this case. Sometimes we can also have a hydraulic unit here. Okay. And then we've got our vacuum pump. And then the next important bit, which is under here, is the solenoid and the vacuum valve. So, you know, obviously we want to be checking things like the mechanical integrity of the machine, the structural integrity of the machine. So we're looking at, you know, the bolt hold and the rotators in, the pins, make sure everything's nice and tight and lubricated. And then we want to check that we've got, um, you know, the filters and the oils in the engine yep. and also on the pump uh, at the right levels. Um, pump's very important, obviously, and we've got a side glass there so we can see what the level needs to be. And so where do we want that to be sitting? What are we looking for? So we're looking for that to be above the halfway mark, so between halfway and three quarters. Yep. Um, above three quarters we get a lot of churning and then that can uh, you know, impact the performance of the pump. Okay. Um, and obviously, you know, don't need me to tell you what <laughs> low, low oil levels will do. Absolutely. So, um, then the other thing that we want to check is we also want to be checking our vacuum filters. Okay. Um, on our machines, there are three filters. One at the pump, the exhaust filter, and then on the other side is the filter that actually connects down to the pad. Sure. Um, these filters are a special vacuum filter. They have reinforcing around the outside, and they've got a very uh, small micro filter uh, element. Okay. Um, which keeps all the dust out of the, uh, out of the And so the sort of dust that we're going to get in here might be the surface dust that's sitting on the pipe when it's been strung out on the right of way, it's dusty. Uh, yep. These are the filters that are going to pull out that dust. That's right, yeah. So we uh, we encourage people to check them daily. Yep. Um, if you're in a, in a fairly clean environment, say for example in a lay down yard, which is you know a hard, hard stand, sure. um, then it's probably not as critical. But certainly if you're out of the right of way and there's a lot of dust or if it's been raining and that, probably pays to check these on a daily basis. Excellent. Yeah. Um, you also need to make sure that we've got you know, all the O-rings and seals in place um, because if they're, if they're missing, then you just won't be able to build vacuum. And then the other important thing is we get a lot of people ringing up saying, oh, we're not getting any vacuum on our lifter, is it's critical to make sure that these lids go on square. And often we find that they just put them on, they're not square, they don't sit right, and then they'll just leave. Right, okay. So that's a really simple thing to, to be mindful of. Excellent. And we've got the alarms up here as well. Yep, so all of our systems um, have a, a low vacuum alarm and also the low vacuum strobe. Um, some of our new units, the uh, new generation, have a third light, which is a green light, which yep. indicates um, safe uh, vacuum levels. Um, but on this one here, we've just got the traditional amber light. Okay. And they'll usually switch on around uh, 19, 19 inches. Yep. And then when you're losing vacuum, they'll actually switch on at 21 inches. Okay, so, so we've got this, how do we actually function test this and make sure that the lights are working and the sirens are working. Okay, so uh, a very simple way of doing it is to make sure that we're below that threshold. Yep. And then if we turn on this ignition, I won't start the engine, but we'll just start the ignition. Yep. Yeah, okay. This making that noise is signaling to us that there's not enough pressure. Yeah. That it's not holding enough pressure. Yeah, that's okay. right. So that's that's, that's signalling that you're below um, 19 inches of vacuum. Okay. 19 inches of vacuum. Um, which means that, you know, it's 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 in that sort of danger zone. Yeah, right? okay. Um, ideally, you know, we want to be operating with the lifter in the green zone. <clears throat> and once it gets above 21, the siren will go off, but it will still be in what we call the yellow zone. Right. Uh, but we like to operate in that green zone just to give us that extra level of, of safety. 
So we've done our inspection, we're happy with our oil levels, we're happy with our filters, we're comfortable that the sirens are operational functioning. Yep. We're about to start our first lift. Is there anything that we need to do before we get into it for the day? Okay, so the very last thing, I guess, is you want to just check that all of your safety labels are in place. Yep. Um, we want to check that we actually have connection with the um, handheld remote. Sure. So if we put that button on, that yellow light should start to flash, which yep. is telling us it's talking to the uh, receiver. This light here, if it's not flashing, uh, means it's okay. If it flashes red, means the battery's here or low. Okay. Yep. But pretty much now, what we'll do is I'll start it up. Sure. Um, we'll build this vacuum up to uh, 30, and then we'll engage the pipe, yep. uh, stop the engine, and then we can probably talk again. Too easy. All right, All right let's get into okay. that. Here we go. Right, so um, I've just turned it off so that we can talk through the process a little bit. Sure. Normally we do this with the engine running. Yep. Um, but what I'll do is I'll engage the, the pad, um, show the people just what the reactions are in the system. Sure. And then we'll continue with the, uh, with yep. the test. So, so you can see here that we've got full vacuum. Yep. Right. But if you look at the pad, you'll see that there's no vacuum on the pad. So that means that the reservoir of vacuum is not uh, attached to the pad yet. Okay. So what what I'll do is um, just put a bit of pressure on that to yeah. get it to seal properly. And if I now press the lift, we'll see a momentarily drop in vacuum here, okay. and then that gauge should go up into the green. Okay. So you can see uh, yeah. you can see that engage right through, and you can actually see the pad. Yeah, uh, pull down onto the pipe. So you can see that we've dropped a little bit of uh, vacuum. We've dropped about uh, three inches. Yep. And that the gauge on the pad is the same as the gauge on the machine. So now the vacuum reservoir and the pad are all one system. And uh, they're holding pressure. So and if one of these was dropping, yeah. well, they'd both be dropping together because they're now That's right. connected. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So Excellent. as I say, generally we'd be doing this with the engine running. Yeah. Uh, we'd be looking at you know getting to that top level, and then we'd switch the engine off. Yep. Um, and then just see what what was going to happen. Um, yep. We like to also lift the pad up a little bit, so yep. I'll I'll do that. Yep. Now you can see that we're we've got the pipe just barely off the ground, um, so all the weight of the pipe is on the pad. Mm -hmm. And then what we can do is check to see how much vacuum we're dropping. Yep. So, you know, we're at uh, 26 inches now, um, and we allow for 20% in five minutes. Okay. okay. So in five minutes time, this needle should still be in the green realm. If it's dropped, then we're, it's suggesting that there's an issue with either the unit or the, the that's seal. Right. Yeah. So and if we, we need to if we, if, that's right. If we had the engine running and we were at and started at 30, yeah. uh, 20 percent of that is six. So we'd be able to get down to about 24. Okay. So that's still in the green. So um, if it drops further than that, yeah. then obviously we've got a problem with either a leaking seal. Sure. Um, some of the hoses might be having a problem, it yep. could be a problem with one of the uh, filter okay. lids, um, or there could be a crack in the pipe. Yep. And we've seen that as well. Wow, um, okay. Particularly with fiberglass pipes. Yep. Yep. So, um, so that's that's what you that's what you need to to, to, Excellent. to to look for. Yeah. Well, Luke, look, I really appreciate you spending some time with me today to sort of explain this stuff in a bit more detail. This is obviously the last check um, that we need to do, and, it, and it's super critical because I know once the day starts, the guys tend to run along and, and making sure that we're doing these checks properly at the start of the day is really important. Uh, we also make the guys do this again after lunch mm -hmm. because things can change. And of course, if you have a, a, a full on morning, you yeah. might be doing a bit of work without rubber. So there's definitely no harm in doing more checks than you need to, to make sure this stuff is safe. And I guess the thing to remember here is if one of these pipes does drop as a result of human error or mechanical failure, we do need to be reporting that to the regulator because it is classified as a dangerous event. It's a drop of a suspended load. Um, Luke, look, really appreciate your time. Thank you for letting us come and film and, and talk a bit more in a bit more detail about these units. They're great. They have definitely revolutionized the way pipe has moved on projects, mm -hmm. uh, both loading and unloading. Uh, and I look forward to working with you again in the future. It's been yep, great. Awesome. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you. Thank you.